The profit stories, profit stories are amazing, are amazing. We like to hear the profit stories, profit stories. We like to hear the profit stories, profit stories. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. How are you, children? Alhamdulillah. We are fine. We like to hear profit stories from you. Okay, mashallah. That's very good. The stories of the prophet are important for all Muslims. Inshallah, today we will learn about Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Are you ready? Yes. Let's get started. Bismillah. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was in the 10th generation after Noah, peace be upon him. And he was born in Babylon. His father did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. And he used to make the idols with his own hands. Allah protected Prophet Ibrahim's heart and mind from the evil and gave him wisdom ever since he was a child. At the age of seven, he asked his father about the funny-looking idol with big ears. And the father answered, It is Marduk, the god of gods, son. The big ear shows his deep knowledge. This made Ibrahim, peace be upon him, laugh. Time went by and Ibrahim, peace be upon him, became a young man with full of hatred for those idols. As a child, when he used to go to the temple with his father, he was surprised to see that the behavior of the people with the idols as if the idols could hear or understand them. At first, it was funny to him. But later, he began to feel angry to his people for their foolishness. He thought that God is greater than those useless idols. How did Prophet Ibrahim wasallam, know about Allah existed? Oh! The story behind that is interesting to hear about. One night, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, left his house to go to a mountain. He was thinking about the sky and stars and the moon which some people accepted as their gods. But his heart knew that that couldn't be God. Sometimes we could only see them and sometimes we couldn't. He continued to search for God. One day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to the truth. He felt good to realize that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our one and only true God. A new life started for Ibrahim, peace be upon him. His mission now was to call his people to the truth. He invited his father to Islam. But his father became very angry with him and warned him to stop. Otherwise, he would stone him as a punishment. Like his father, other people also rejected his call and threatened him. Wow, they were very bad. Then what did he do? Did he make plans to make them learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really existed? Yes. Then he made a plan to destroy their idols. During one big festival, when everybody was on the riverbank, he went to the temple with an axe and destroyed all of the statues except for the biggest one. Before he left the temple, he hung the axe around its neck and left. When the people returned, they were shocked to see their god smashed into pieces, lying and scattering all over the temple. They began to guess who had done this to their idol, and Prophet Ibrahim came to their minds. They brought him to the temple and asked him, are you the one who has done this to our gods? He told them to ask the biggest idol which was unbroken. And they said to him, You know well that those idols don't speak. 
He asked them, Then why they worship these gods who neither speaks nor even can defend themselves? They realized that they were wrong, but their ignorance would not allow them to admit their foolishness. And they started yelling at him and shouting at him. Barty! 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 What? Did they really want to burn him? With a huge fire? Then he will die! Are you sure they wanted to kill him for that? Yes, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different plan. They didn't want to listen to Prophet Ibrahim's advice. So, they kept him in chains and planned their revenge. Anger was burning in their heart. They decided to throw Ibrahim peace be upon him into the biggest fire that they could build. They dug a deep hole and filled it with firewood and made a huge fire. The people stood away from the fire because of the great heat. They tied his hands and feet and put him on the shooter. They were ready to throw him into this big fire. And right there at that time, Angel Jibrail came near his head and asked him, Oh, Ibrahim, do you wish for anything? Did Prophet Ibrahim ask to be saved from the fire? No, he said that he only wished that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased with him. The shooter was released and Ibrahim peace be upon him was thrown into the fire. But Allah would not allow his prophet to be killed. He ordered the fire to be cool and safe for the prophet. And then the miracle happened. The fire obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, came from the fire as if he was coming out from a garden. Peaceful, there was no sign of smoke in his clothes. People watched in shock and said, <gasps> Amazing that Ibrahim God saved him from the fire. This story has two lessons. Who can tell me? I know, I know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested to see how strong of a faith Prophet Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam had about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know the second one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his miracle to tell others that Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam was really a prophet so people would believe in him and accept his words. That's right. Mashallah. When the king of Babylon, Namrud, heard about this event, he became very angry. He wanted to debate with him and show his people that he, the king, was indeed their god. And Ibrahim was a liar. And he asked Ibrahim, What can your god can do, I can't. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, said, Allah gives life and death. The king proudly said, <laughs> I can give life and death. I can kill anyone, bring them from the street, and I can give my pardon to a person who was sentenced to death and save his life. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the sun rise from the east. Can you make it rise from the west? Namrud was speechless. He was very smart and brave. Yes, he was. After a long time of calling people to worship only the one and only God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only one woman and one man believed in him. The woman's name was Sarah, and she became his wife. The man was his nephew, Lut, and he became a prophet. So they decided to move out from Babylon. Prophet Ibrahim, Lut, and Sarah, peace be upon him, started their long travel. They crossed Syria, Palestine, and then Egypt, calling his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, helping the poor and doing good deeds. By that time, Lut, peace be upon him, migrated close to the Dead Sea. One day, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how the dead people will come back to life on the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to take four birds, cut them up, and mix their body parts. 
divide them into four portions and place them on top of four different hills. Then call back the birds by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. Immediately, the mixed parts of the birds separated to join their original bodies in different places. And the birds flew back to Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Wow! What a beautiful miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him! What happened in Egypt? In Egypt, there was a bad king, and he tried to harm the Prophet's wife Sarah, peace be upon her. When he saw her, he tried to hold her with his hand, but his hand got stiff. He asked Sarah, Pray to Allah for me, and I shall not harm you. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him, he again tried to hold her and his hand got stiff again. Then he realized that she was not an ordinary woman. He again requested Sarah peace be upon her to cure him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him. Before Sarah left the place, the king gave her an Egyptian maid servant named Hajra peace be upon her. Hajar? She was the Prophet's second wife, right? And is she the mother of Prophet Ismail alayhi wa sallam too? Yes, mashallah, you know the story. When did she become Prophet Ibrahim's second wife? Time went by and no children were born to Sarah. But they were getting old. So Sarah requested Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him to marry their servant Hajra and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them with a child. Hajra gave birth to her first son Ismail. But at that time, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was an old man. Oh, now I know. Now I will tell you about the story of the Zamzam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, one day, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, woke up and asked his wife Hajra, to get her son and prepare for a long journey. At that time, Ismail, peace be upon him, was only a cute little babe. After a long, long walk, they reached a desert next to Asafa and Al Mara mountain. That valley had no fruit, no food, and no water. The valley had no sign of life. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, left them alone with a small amount of food and water, which was hardly enough for two days. Hajar asked him why he was leaving them in the desert area. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, did not answer her. She asked him if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do so, and the Prophet replied yes. Then his great wife realized that they were not alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be there with them. Hajra went on nursing Ismail and drinking from the water until it was finished. She became very thirsty and the child was crying. She left him on Almara hill and hurried to the nearest hill, Asifa. She stood there and started to look at the valley so that she might see somebody. But she could not see anyone. She was running back to Almara Hill and she stood and started to look. But she couldn't see anybody at all. She kept on running between Asafa and Almara Mountain seven times. When she reached Almara for the last time, she was very tired and she sat next to the baby. Then. She heard a voice. She stood up and asked help. She saw an angel digging the earth until water flowed. She built a little basin around it. She scooped the water with her hands and drank and filled her water bag and nursed her baby. The place from which water flowed was the Zamzam. What a miracle! But they live there alone. They must have been scared. They even need food to survive and they barely had any. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a really big plan. He was very pleased with Hajar peace be upon her. For her strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So he sent some Arab travelers through Mecca and they saw birds flying around Al Marwa. <gasps> they must be flying around the water. When they arrived at the water, they found Hajra and asked her, Would you allow us to stay with you and use this water, please? She agreed and became very happy to see new people. The people settled there and became permanent residents. The whole valley became alive. When did Prophet Ibrahim sacrifice his son Ismail? When Ismail, peace be upon him, was a little boy, one night, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, saw a dream to sacrifice his son Ismail. The next night, Allah showed him the same dream. He became ready to fulfill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order, even though he loved his son dearly. Ibrahim salam, came to Ismail, peace be upon him, and told him about the dream. He asked his son's opinion. Ismail, peace be upon him, advised his father to fulfill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order, and he would show his patience. On the way, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, took a knife and passed a place called Mina. The devil, Shaitan, came to them and tried to convince them not to fulfill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. They both chased the Shaitan away, turned their backs on him, and did not listen. When they had reached Mount Arafat, Prophet Ibrahim had laid his son Ismail peace be upon him on his forehead while he was on the ground. He then took the knife and was ready to sacrifice his son. At that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called out to him, Oh, Ibrahim, you have fulfilled the vision. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his beloved prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him to sacrifice an animal instead of his son Ismail peace be upon him. That's why that little boy Ismail peace be upon him became a prophet. He had a very strong faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever since he was a child. I wish I had strong faith like him. MashaAllah. We should pray all the time for our strong faith about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way that we will be successful in this life and the afterlife. So when was Prophet Ishaq peace be upon him born? When Ibrahim and Sarah peace be upon him was very old, the angels came to see them in a human form. The Prophet welcomed them as a stranger and guest. He served them a roasted calf but did not eat any food. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, started to fear. The angels informed him not to fear because they were the angels. They brought good news for them. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give him a son. The son was to be called Ishaq and he was to be a prophet. Sarah could not believe that it was true. She was very old. The angel said that all things are possible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did Prophet Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam visit to Prophet Ismail? Yes! Ismail, peace be upon him, grew up and learned Arabic and later got married. After a while, Prophet Ibrahim came to see his family. But at that time, his wife Hajra, peace be upon him, had died and his son Ismail, peace be upon him, was not at home. So, the Prophet asked Ismail's wife about their living conditions. But she complained to him about everything. She was not grateful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. Prophet Ibrahim realized that she was very ungrateful. This kind of woman would not be a good wife for the future Prophet Ismail peace be upon him. He left a secret message for his son Ismail peace be upon him to divorce her. Ismail peace be upon him obeyed his father. He divorced his wife and married another woman. After a while, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, again visited his son and saw that he was married to a very good woman. She was very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. When was the Kaaba built? Now, time arrived to build the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to build a house 
to worship him. Prophet Ibrahim went with his son Prophet Ismail peace be upon him to get help to build the Kaaba. Then they raised the foundations of the Kaaba. The foundation stone for the Kaaba came from the heaven. It is found today in the corner of the Kaaba known as the black stone. Ismail peace be upon him brought the stones while Ibrahim peace be upon him built it. And when the walls became very high, Ismail brought a stone and put it for his father Ibrahim peace be upon him who stood over it. The name of the stone was called Makame Ibrahim. Finally, they finished the building. Then they both prayed to their Lord to accept their service. How long did Prophet Ibrahim alayhi wasallam live? And where is his grave? Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him lived for 175 years. There was a lot of test and trials in his life, but he had a strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he passed away, he was buried in Hebron, 20 miles southwest of Jerusalem. Wow! That was a very nice story. Yes, this is a very nice story. Inshallah, next time, we will learn another beautiful story of the Prophet. The Prophet story. If you like our videos, to support Ikra Cartoon, please share and subscribe to our channel.